Hey guys, it's Miss Horn, and welcome to a quick tutorial over titration calculations. Due to popular demand, I'm recording this for you. So I'm just going to go through one problem um, using the titration equation. So I'm actually on your review sheet right now on problem 20. Um, before we start, I'm going to write out the equation for you. This is given to you on your exam. The equation for the titration, and I'll go ahead and write titration on here um, is N B M A V A is equal to N A M B V B. I've been asked several times, um, is the B and the A actually on the right side? Yes, this is the correct equation. It should be N B M A V A equals N A M B V B. N stands for the coefficient in the balanced equation. Okay. Your capital M stands for the molarity. And the V, as usual, is volume. Now, something new you may be noticing is that there's these little letters like B's and A's. Now, what are these? If it's a little b, it applies to a base. If it's a little a, it applies to an acid. So, for example, nb would be the coefficient for the base, ma would be the molarity for the acid, and ba would be the volume of the acid. Okay? So, that's going to help you um, when you're plugging in your equation. Okay. What is the molarity of barium hydroxide if 50 milliliters is needed to neutralize 10 milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution of phosphoric acid? All right, now let's first of all see what they give us in the problem. If you read initially, it says, what is the molarity of barium hydroxide? Hopefully by now you know barium hydroxide is the base. You know this is the base because it contains the hydroxide ion, which indicates a base. So because they're asking what is the molarity, you know they're asking for the molarity of the base. So I'm going to go ahead and put a question mark with MB there. If 15 milliliters is needed to neutralize, when they're talking about this 15 milliliters, they're talking about the volume of your base is equal to 15 milliliters. So I'm going to write that out. So it makes it easier in the end to plug into the equation. Okay, next, to neutralize 10 milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution of phosphoric acid. I know this is phosphoric acid because it has the hydrogen ion here, which indicates an acid. So I know that this 10 milliliters is VA, the volume of the acid. And I know this 1.5 capital M is also applying to the acid. This is MA, 1.5. This is the molarity or the concentration of the acid. So if you look at what I'm given, just by reading the problem, I've got a question mark next to MB. That's what I'm going to be solving for. VB, VA, and MA. I'm missing some stuff. I'm missing those N's. And remember I told you the N is the coefficient, right? So that coefficient comes from the balanced equation called a neutralization equation that you by now should know how to write out. I'm going to go ahead and write it out for you. Now remember, in a neutralization equation, you've got your acid plus your base. And when you mix those together, you're going to get salt and water. So let's try that. My acid is phosphoric acid, H3PO4. My base is barium hydroxide. Remember that neutralization equations are double replacement. If you're in my class, I like to use the box method to show that on the outside of your box, if you write the acid first and then the base, you can see you've got hydrogen and you've got hydroxide. Anytime you put hydrogen and hydroxide together, 
hydrogen's plus one, hydroxide's minus one, you get HOH, right? Well, hopefully by now you know that HOH is the same thing as H2O. So on the outside here, that's how I'm getting my water molecule. Okay, then next I'm going to crisscross barium and phosphate. Barium, looking on your periodic table, now you've got to remember these trends. Here's the periodic table of elements, right? You've got to know your oxidation numbers. Hopefully by now you're good with this. You know, the first column's plus one, second's plus two. We're going to skip all of our um, transition metals plus three. Skip carbon, it's really plus or minus four, but we're going to skip that. Then we get to negative three, negative two, negative one. So looking at barium, it's right here. It's in the plus two column. Okay, and all of my stuff is erased because I switched screens, but that's okay. Um, so rewriting that really quickly for you, H3PO4 plus my barium hydroxide. We already determined that water was made on the outside here, right? And crisscrossing barium, which is plus two, with phosphate. If you look that up on the back, I don't want to switch screens again because it's going to eliminate my writing, but it's a negative three. So crisscrossing, you get BA3, PO4 with a little two. Okay? Hopefully by now that makes sense to you. With that said, I generally tell my students to balance the salt first and balance the water last. For some reason that tends to work pretty well. So this is my salt, this is my water. I'll do this one first and this one last, which would be fourth. Okay. So looking at the salts, and the reason we balance it first is because it's usually the messiest. See how there's BA3, there's three bariums on this side? Well, there's only one here, so I'm going to put my coefficient of three. And then after that, I am going to look at phosphate. There's two of them. I only have one over here, so I'm going to put a two as my coefficient here. And lastly, I'll deal with water. 2 times 3 gives me 6 hydrogens in that molecule, plus 2 times 3, which gives me 6 more. I have a total of 12 on the left side, so in front of the water I need to put a 6. 6 times 2 gives me 12, and I have a balanced equation. Okay, so I did all of that mess just to get those n values for you. This right here is going to be n a, it's the coefficient of my acid. This right here is in B, it's the coefficient of the base. We already said barium hydroxide, that hydroxide makes it the base. The um, phosphoric acid, that H plus, makes it the acid. Okay, so I know that no longer is anything labeled because I switched screens. So I'm going to go ahead and point that out one last time in the equation because it reads what's the molarity of barium hydroxide that is our base that's what we're looking for this is our volume of the base here is the volume of the acid and lastly the molarity of the acid so we have everything we need for our equation one more time the equation is NB MAVA is equal to N A M B V B. Okay, so N B. Now that I've labeled everything, I can just look it up. It's the number three. Because that's the coefficient of my base times the molarity of the acid. I labeled it right up here for you 1.5 times the volume of the acid 10 milliliters equals the molarity of. B, or not molarity, I apologize, um, Na, the coefficient of the acid, it's right here, it's a 2, times the molarity of the base, that's what we're looking for, so in my equation I'm just going to leave it as Mb, times the volume of the base, which is 15. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up by doing a little math for you, so 3 times 1.5 times 10, plug that in your calculator. 
3 times 1.5 times 10. I get 45 on the left side of the equation is equal to 2 times 15, that would be 30, times MB. So how am I going to solve for MB? Well, I want to get it by itself, right? So that means I need to divide both sides by 30. It'll cancel on the right side with MB. So I know MB will be 45 divided by 30. And I get MB is equal to 1.5. Okay, let's check sig figs. I have three sig figs here, three sig figs here, and two sig figs here, round to the least amount, so I want two sig figs. 1.5 is only two sig figs. Because it's MB, it's applying to the molarity of the base. Use capital M to stand for molarity, and then label it with the correct formula for your base, which is barium hydroxide okay and that's all there is to a titration problem this is one of the more difficult ones but if you follow it through step by step you should be able to do it fairly easy okay for more tutorials over acid and bases you can go to the academic chemistry website I hope this tutorial helped and good luck on your test